What is up guys, this is Mr. B3Q and welcome back to another video today. Today I'll be offering you a tutorial on how to create a material design wallpaper in Photoshop. Uh, material design is a concept created by Google that everything has dimension, everything has bright colors, and everything is basically very flat and clean while still maintaining a very nice uh, rich color look and uh, dimension to it. So uh, I for, first and foremost like to apologize, this is a voiceover actually. This is not the original recording because my microphone would not record when I had it working in the software. I don't know why. So I was kind of livid when I found out that it wasn't recording the voice, but oh well. So I'm going to just pop in whenever there's something worth mentioning in this. Um, right now I'm just creating a new document um, in 4K, so 3840 by 2160 because it's a nice solid resolution 4K. It has uh, the nice 16 by 9 aspect ratio and still looks very detailed. So, I went ahead and created it, or something. Yeah, if I if I sound a little bit distanced from the actual recording, that's because, like I said, it kind of ruined my day when I found out it didn't record. So, um, when I made this uh, wallpaper, I didn't know what color I wanted to use because I had already made really nice ones in green and blue and yellow and lots of the other, uh, bleh, sorry, I can't talk either and lots of other colors, colors as well, so I decided to make it in purple, uh, which actually proved to be harder than expected because there aren't very many good shades of purple that are worth using in a nice background for uh, material design. So, yeah, the other thing with material design is that you need to maintain lots of polygons because polygons are what going to make it very nice and flat while still maintaining the dimension that I was mentioning earlier. So what I did was I go ahead and create a nice big gray square right here, or I mean rectangle, and uh, I went into the settings menu and added a drop shadow with a uh, 100 px size roughly and uh, no distance because it needs to be right on there, and the the uh, angle of which it needed to be projected was around 90. So I went ahead and did that. I'm going to have background music playing too because this is going to be really annoying just me rambling on. Right here I went ahead and rotated it so it may make it look very nice and uh, scattered really because um, you want it to be collected but scattered if you know what I mean. Because I know those are completely different words but if you really think about it everything's on the same paper yet still very diversified in shape, size, and form. So what I'm doing right here is I'm showing that if you push alt while selecting a shape and you click and drag you can actually copy that and it will just make an entirely new layer uh, when creating when doing something like this make sure that the copied layer is much brighter or um, just slightly lighter uh, that's what I'm doing right here I'm showing you how to make it a little bit brighter uh, and right about now I made the big mistake of merging these two layers so I couldn't get an accurate way to change the colors very easily which is okay but Nevertheless, don't do that until you're finished with it. Uh, I was messing around there because it looked really funny. It looked like it was a sort of a parallelogram and not a uh, square or a rectangle because it's a rectangle. I didn't do anything to distort it, I just rotated it. So I had to check myself there for a um, So right here, I'm creating a new circle. And I mentioned in the actual recording something along the lines of uh, size doesn't matter because you can go back and scale it later. So uh, I just did the whole all quick drag thing that I just did here, and uh, trying to get it look nice, it has a nice uh, border to it as well, because I think uh, the border looks really nice uh, when you don't have the drop shadow on it, like I did with the um, overlay on the left. So uh, I'm not so sure what I'm doing right here. I think I'm just uh, doing some stuff. Oh yeah, if you can push control uh, to select multiple layers, you can actually scale or rotate multiple layers at a time, and uh, my computer is like beeped at me really quickly, so I was like, what's up? Um, yeah, so this is going to be quite an interesting uh, uh, narration, because uh, I've been talking for just 10 minutes, basically the exact same thing I did 10 minutes ago. So right here what I'm doing is I am uh, messing around with different kinds of shapes, and I said to myself, hey, let's go ahead and show you guys how to make a nice hexagon background. So uh, here I'm trying to figure out how to get a nice hexagon. Um, because it's really hard to get a nice looking hexagon. I think this is the one that I need to do right here. And I just simply used uh, edit, transform, whatever. And I tried rotating it to see if it was crooked, but it ended up not being crooked. So 
Yeah. There are many interesting things that can happen when you're creating one of these things, but always make sure you maintain originality and creativity. Uh, so I put that on top, and then I dragged that layer down uh, right above the background. So it has a nice looking uh, layer of it, like, uh, like the show that I'm to And then using the alt click drag trick once again, uh, I just basically copied it over a bunch of times to make it a nice hex pattern all the way across it. It should snap to place um, everywhere you go. And uh, make sure that you're highlighting the shape that you just created when you're doing this because otherwise you can get some really fun looking patterns that are what you exactly expected because it's like, like I showed here, I forgot to uh, select the shape I was actually trying to drag and I ended up doing something hilarious. So I just went ahead and positioned that right there. And so now we have this nice hex pattern in the back. I've been talking for six minutes, now I have to talk for 10 minutes. So uh, what I did here is I just merged all the layers because we're not gonna need to do that anymore. But then I noticed on the layer, there's actually a white spot in the lower right corner, as you may notice, and I messed up right there because I forgot to use the whole control trick again. And you notice there's no hexagon there, so just make sure you keep an element over that so that way it's covered up. In the actual photo, no one's gonna really care because you can't pick things up in the actual photo. So. Uh, right here, I found out my mistake of that layer there uh, and merging it. So, what I had to do is just completely recreate that entire thing. So, what I had, what I did was I just went ahead and deleted it. And I think I actually tried looking to see if you could actually unmerge a layer, which is completely ridiculous because you just can't do that. So, I just went ahead and created a new one. And I think the color was off, but I don't know. So, I tried looking to see if it was the right color, and it ended up being the right one. So. Make sure you always push enter to apply transformation, otherwise you might accidentally rasterize the layer and then you won't be able to do anything with it, so, except for like, color it or something. You have to use like the magic wand tool and stuff to get the like, accurate like, portrayal or whatever. So I just did the whole uh, alt click drag thing, just trying to recreate what I had already erased real quick. I uh, made it brighter, got rid of the drop shadow to get that nice transition effect. And then I did a click and drag thing again. But since they're the same color and they don't have a drop shadow, you can't really see where it is. So I just went ahead and added it back in so I could see where it was on the edge. And um, for this one, I'm making more of a, a different kind of effect. But I'm making a purple layer. Um, I'm using a different kind of effect where it's basically if every um, layer gets wider and wider. Um, I end up going back and adjusting right there, as you can see. But I don't like where the purple was, so I went ahead and adjusted that even further. So notice every layer is getting slightly bigger every time, and then I end up making actually one more layer that is like really close to the edge. And then uh, this is the part right here where I actually go ahead and try to make the purple a little bit lighter, because when you create two layers of the same color on top of each other, you're actually supposed to make it brighter. But it was really hard to find the right color because I couldn't find a light purple, because it needs to have some bit of white in it as well. So I've just messed around in this part a little bit, trying to find the right color and it uh, didn't end up working so well. So I just kind of left it as is, I think. I actually, made, I actually made it darker because that's another thing you can do if you don't have any success with trying to make it lighter. So, and then I just hid the drop shadows to see if I could make a better transition at, or just leave it with the drop shadow and see if it's any better. But I think at this point, the uh, wallpaper is done, so I go ahead and save it. You really should be saving it a lot more often than I did, but since I'm in a hurry, sort of, I'm not really caring, because it takes like 10 minutes to create one of these, as you can clearly see. Um, so I just went ahead and saved it as a Photoshop file, and then I went ahead and saved it as a PNG as well, because when you save it as a PNG, it also maintains uh, a higher quality when being viewed on a computer. Uh, things like a JPEG should be viewed um, in, it, they can be viewed in a computer too, but they don't have transparent backgrounds and they don't save players. So yeah. And I'm, right now I'm going to go through and show you guys uh, the photo we made. And um, with the nice purple effects going on, all the circle, hexagon patterns. I think this one actually turned out rather well considering it was kind of rushed. Uh, this is one I did earlier today. Uh, it was made with uh, green texture as my base. and. Um, I really like how I got the odd shaping, the borders, and the circle. 
it all looks really, really good, and I use it as my background, actually, um, right now. So even though my background actually has a sort of blue theme, I tried putting a green picture, so I don't know. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to be notified for future videos, and I'll see you in the next one.